Robert. And I'm Vanessa. And I'll be Travis. And we are late to the party, and it's another Western edition of Better, Better Late Than Never, partner. So, Travis, uh, at, at the beginning of this whole series, I told you there was one movie we absolutely have to do. And again, I will be severely disappointed if it isn't that film. Yes, it's one of those movies that I re okay, don't kick me for this, but I recently just watched. Kick her, Travis. But you don't even know what we're watching. I'm assuming this is a movie that I recently just okay, sorry. Uh, that we're putting a lot of pressure on you because well, it isn't that movie. I yes. really hope we're you guys troll wrapping this whole that. episode. Yes. Really hope you chose Spyfall right. Goes West. Yes, yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Thank Jimmy God. Stewart. Drummer Star. <laughs> this particular movie, uh, was released December 25th of 1993. Yes. Had a budget of $25 million. Christmas? Box office hit of $56.5 million. Directed by George P. Cosmodos, kind of. No. Um, there was and if you've ever been in southern Arizona, you have mainly seen some of the actors, the star on a billboard. Yes. Uh, this For film the city. Was actually, going back to the director, yeah. uh, this film was supposed to be the screenwriter Kevin Gier's first Phil job as a director, uh, but he was quickly overwhelmed and just couldn't get everything done, was falling behind schedule, just completely... <laughs> so he was fired, and George P. Cosmodos was hired, and helped this movie go over budget a little bit too, because he wanted to make things more authentic. Very authentic, authentic clothing, everything had to look real. Which they didn't have and, and had to bring in they, outside companies. I was going to say, I heard that they had to bring like another... They like, hired uh, yeah. reenactors yeah, re to, come in to come in with their own guns, their uh -huh. own horses, their own stunt riding, everything. Yeah. Uh, so this movie is about an infamous 30-second shootout that happened at 3 p.m. on a Wednesday, October 22nd, 26th of 1881. So this movie stars Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer, Sam Elliott, That's Bill funny. Paxton, Powers Booth, Michael Bean, and even Charlton Hessen, and that's just only naming a few. Billy Bob Thornton's like a player with my sister's kids or something. <laughs> oh, Billy Bob Thornton had a role where he just ad-libbed his entire scene and never was even actually scripted for it. Yeah, and it it, it, it is, makes it so organic and perfect. I so love that. So clearly we know what this is. Tell Absolutely. <laughs> let's watch this, because I have a lot to say after this. Of you course. may too, so let's see if you guys would watch this movie based upon this trailer. All right. Yes, Kurt Which Russell's in it. Come on. They made Son-in-Law and the Mario Brothers movie. What Mario Brothers? This was a place where a man could start over, where a fortune could be made. Clear, they classic movie voice. Quicken the Dead? Tombstone as a legend. There he is with that magnificent beard or mustache. Why it's a billboard now. Mustache. Yep, he's on our billboards for Tombstone. Yeah, there he is. Not me. I'm in my prime. <laughs> so good. The music, though. Listen to this music. <laughs> Even got Mary Poppins in there, too. <laughs> Mary Poppins, y'all. Oh, yeah, Michael. Mickey Rooker. Old Tucson. Michael Rooker. Michael Rooker. Sam Elliott just saved her. That's Old Tucson. No, spoilers! Spoilers! <laughs> that everybody knows from history. Yeah, but still. Well, we'll speak about that. Freaking, uh, Ike. I love Ike. None of your problem, Doc. You don't have to mix up in this. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. In a battle, the last charge of flying been there. is orders at the OK Corral. Oh my god. The West would never forget. Who shot first? Who shot first? Thomas Hayden Church, too? Russell, Val Kilmer, Dana Delaney, Powers Booth, Michael B. Then we'll have room service. This trailer's oh, epic. Kids. Yes. Yeah. And Charlton Heston. <laughs> you shall coming. And, and hell's, hell's coming, coming with me. me. Justice is coming to Tombstone. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Would you see this movie based upon this trailer? Yeah. Oh, of I course. <laughs> I watched this movie based on this trailer. Me too. 
And if you don't know, this movie is actually based on, like I said, an actual factual event. However, this movie does take liberties on what had happened or how long things took to happen. Of course. This movie, you know, condensed everything down. Happened on a couple of nights, a couple of hours. It actually took years and months for this to build up. The cowboys and the herbs, the herbs being lawmen, um, and the cowboys being more of eh, cowboys. Depending on who you talk to. Shoot no, from the hip they, type. Sci the science. Science. <laughs> Facts have shown who they are. Uh, they not say that they were good cops or good policemen or anything like that, or good lawmen. That they were law, and these cowboys belonged to a group that were mm, less than honest. You know, may have stolen things, smuggled things across from Mexico to sell here in the States. Um, very risque type of thing. The actual shootout is, yes, very controversy. Who shot first? Controversy. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Trying to be French. <laughs> no. Controversy. So, uh, no one knows exactly what had happened. Um, the story goes that the lawmen were told that they were carrying weapons that they should have been carrying in town. And they went to go disarm them, and things just escalated crazy because of the tensions were already high. So, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know who shot first. Han. So, Travis, <laughs> you went into like a whole history lesson. Barely. Barely. There's so much more in this. I could even so, talk more further than right, this. But, but so Virgil Earp. He was actually U.S. Marshal before he even got to Tombstone. The movie portrays that not even ever actually happening. Okay. But I will say <laughs> this, though. Like, that whole scene uh, at the famous shootout at the OK Corral, it's like blimp. And they make it more dramatic in this movie and in another movie and in another not movie. Not actually. I disagree with that. I think this movie does a great re representation of what had happened. No, I agree. Yes, I is think it longer than this, a 30 second of what had happened? That they do a very good representation of this, of that, of this. that shootout during this movie. But that shootout but just was just funny. a catalyst of what had happened more in this movie. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to stop talking. Robert, what are your thoughts? Okay, so let's focus on <laughs> the movie and the trailer, which is exactly what we were going to do. Uh, so yes, the trailer. The trailer does not use any of that amazing Bruce Broughton music either, which definitely oh sets up a tone for the film versus this very 90s type music but damn like did it not get me hooked like it did it it, it got did me job. it did what it was supposed to do especially throwing name after name after name and of course you've got people that i absolutely love of like you got michael bean and michael bean was dominating at corporal hicks and and yeah. terminator and you knew who this guy was and you're dropping him in there with all these other amazing actors that are pretty prominent at the time jason Priestley as well stephen lang wasn't even that big of a star back then but going back and watching it you're like damn that's stephen lang um in a big role Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. Billy Zane. Yeah. Like, there's just people all over this movie, and it never feels shoehorned. Even Charlton Heston's addition to it late in the game Perfectly does not feel shoehorned. Yeah. You got Michael Rooker, who's also in Days of Thunder, um, and so you're just taking all these actors that are actually noticeable a from very, other roles. A very this one. big cast for this yeah. movie, too. I mean, especially with the Earps as well. You've got, you know, uh, Kurt Russell, and Kurt Russell, like, at this time was just killing it with all the movies he was in before and then Bill Paxton as well so you and then you got uh Sam Elliott yeah. so it's just kind of like you notice how we have not and mentioned Bell one. I want Kilmer to, before we get to the Kilmer <laughs> I want to actually talk about Kurt Russell for a moment sure. with this movie uh he was very important in fact that most people believe he was the one who actually directed this film and got mm -hmm. it on track and kept it going he helped with the rewrites he helped making sure it's there there's a scene in the movie where it's raining that he's info he just hates so bad yep. and if you watch it you can see why the rain it, it monsoon it's raining like crazy after the death of morgan and he's out in the street twirling around all angry uh and there yeah down. there's rain it's patches boring. there's parts where there's no rain whatsoever you can see clearly behind him that and there's no rain so. kurt kurt russell wanted to go back and reshoot that scene because he hated the lack of continuity in that it, that scene and they said no like you, there's no you time can't, you can't you can't do it. We can't go back. We can't shoot. There's no money. We just can't do it. It's done. It's got to be the way it is. So, yeah, Kurt Russell definitely had influence on how this movie played out. And I think a lot of the success is owed to the just a lot of the 
um, experience that a lot of these actors brought to it. And we got to talk and see Michael Bean at Phoenix Comic Con ways away a long time ago. And he was talking about how they were collaborating. Everyone was collaborating when it came to making everything better. Which I thought was an awesome thing because that means that they really did want this movie to be very like to the story of what happened in tombstone but also make it very realistic as far as westerns go and stuff and they didn't want to kind of just be like oh it's another paycheck for me and right. i'm just going to be in this movie they really wanted to make sure that this movie did come yeah. out and be really good and you right. can kind of see it that they they really did put a lot into as far as when they're acting like the sets and everything and uh that i think that w that's another reason why this movie is very um I want to say charismatic it has a lot of charisma charisma to it and yeah. it brings people they're like you know what i want to watch tombstone i could watch this movie all the time and and as you were saying you just recently saw it too yeah i did um, i really like it a lot and, it's a good movie i'm like kicking myself i should have watched it earlier oh yeah there's there were so many times where i saw the poster and stuff and i'm like i really need to see that movie i really need to see that movie and i just never did and then we finally did it, and I'm like, dang, I should have seen it earlier, but, you know. That was one of those movies where we had to sit you down and say, no, we're watching it. you got no <laughs> other excuse. Uh, Kurt Russell, though, in his, this role is very iconic. In fact, as I'm saying, his face is on the billboards to Tombstone yes. to come visit. Yeah. Um, not saying that other people who haven't portrayed Wyatt Earp before has not, not done a great job. Right. Kurt Russell just took it to another level and es really escalated this character and embodied this character, you know. It may not be the most historically accurate but who knows really right but i love kurt russell when i think of kurt russell movies this is one of the first that pop into my mind and there's a lot out there mine's cat and ron but yes when you're talking about memorable characters there's clearly one that transcends everybody in every western ever created and that's, of course, Val Kilmer. Yes. Val yeah. Kilmer. Oh, Val Kilmer. One of the reasons why this movie is so memorable is what Val Kilmer brought to that character. You want to talk about charisma. You want to talk about just energy. To it was the brought. Point energy where for I a felt, guy that moves so slowly. Of course. <laughs> but that, too, but to the point where I felt really, really bad to the fact when they came out with Wyatt Earp. Right. Um, and then they had Dennis, Dennis Quaid, Quaid play Doc Holliday. It wasn't um, the fact that he. It wasn't like he did not do a good job. It's just that Val Kilmer took his, took that character to the next level, yeah. where you kind of like forgot about the other way. And, it, yeah. and the same thing happened with uh, Wyatt Earp too, with Kurt Russell. Yeah. And then you go to the the other movie with Kevin Costner, yeah. and you're kind of like, uh. It <laughs> so. did it for all the characters. Yeah. All the characters, Absolutely. our opinion, are just better in Tombstone right. versus what we ended up getting in Wyatt Earp. And I think it's because they are more characters versus just regular real mm -hmm. people, um, which that has, that's, you know, an interpretation you could take from Tombstone is that it's very fabricated yeah. in the sense that it's it's made into a, a Hollywood movie. It's, yeah, it's condensed. It's it condensed right. the, the, the right. Earp story. Well, yeah. Where the Wyatt Earp movie kind of gives more of an actual more. Wyatt Earp story, not right. just about what had happened at Tombstone. And that makes sense. But, I mean, the story is called Wyatt Earp. But of course. <laughs> yes. For the movie. Val Kilmer. Oh, my God. He did so great. He studied for months on how to twirl guns, and then he got to the point where he was twirling this weighted uh, cup. cup for the movie. Yeah. And it is, I just, uh, there's so much to say, I don't even know where I want to go with it, because Val Kilmer's lines, I quote this movie all the time, we quote this movie all the time, and I'm sure yeah. a lot of people out there do the same thing. The most infamous line is, I'm your Huckleberry. Huckleberry. Yeah. And rumor That's has it. Game. Yeah. Like, there's so many. Daisy if you do. Which is an actual historical statement that was said. Uh -huh. A lot of these things in this movie really did happen. Like Kurt Russell, a wide Earp, walking on the water with the shotgun, sticking him in no, which was filmed at uh, a state Sabino park. Canyon Sabino Canyon here State in Park, Tucson, not too Arizona. far from here. Yeah. Um, but him walking on water, shooting people, that legitimately happened, and how it's quoted. Of course. It is great. I just. However, I think it's funny, like the whole scene that they did with um, uh, Michael Bean's character, you know, uh, and then uh, Val Kilmer, Doc Holliday, when they kind of. He's waiting for. 
white, of but course. instead Doc comes out instead, and you actually don't really know what happened during that scene because yeah, yeah you in don't actual, know how Johnny Ringo died. Right, in actual history, they found him. Yeah, shot in the head. Shot in but the that head. That was pretty so. much it. But yeah, that's yeah. obviously interpretations that they, the liberties that they took right. with the story versus right. real life. But yes, that rivalry that ends up developing between Johnny Ringo and Doc Holliday, it does come to an amazing twisty moment where it's like, oh damn, we thought it was white versus Ringo, but yo, know, it makes sense that it's Doc versus Ringo, and they did a great job at structuring that, and I think that's what I love about this movie, is how oh, yeah. as much trouble as they had with the development and creation of it, the structure for me is just perfect right, just in from, every way. Just from the start of the movie, yep. the very first scene where they're at a Mexican wedding. Yeah, the, the, oh. the wedding massacre. I'm going to tell you right now, though. Stephen Lang is a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, and that, but he does this great job at it, and that's the thing yeah. is, it's not the, it's not just quotable because Val Kilmer had amazing lines. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> in the movie, at Hell's coming. We're coming. We're, we're coming. coming. we're coming. We're coming for you. Like, Hell's um, coming. He ain't bluffing. With me. He ain't bluffing. <laughs> he ain't bluffing. <laughs> we put it out, boy. He ain't bluffing. He ain't bluffing. <laughs> but yeah, that's it's so quotable when it comes to I I want one. Good happy hunting. Like there's so <laughs> many. Yeah. 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 Billy Zane and oh, uh, Dana. Billy Dana. Delaney. Um, what do you think about that devil up there? <laughs> yeah, I had to draw and shoot that devil in the ass. What about you, Ringo? I already did. did. And there, even then, too, there's a lot, like, those scenes, like, even with Billy Zane and stuff like that, there's also heartfelt moments, even with his character, too. Of course. And, oh, it's so sad. Yeah. Jason Presley, yeah. yeah. He just wanted to make the world beautiful, and you made it ugly. You made it horrible. But it does say, like you said, there is more to the story, and you do see that in this movie at hints about who lined on whose side, who believed who, and it wasn't just, you know, he was dumb and got corrupted. No, a lot of people sided on the side. Which goes back to both. the actual events of what happened. Correct, Two different yeah. newspapers. People sided with... Um, the Cowboys. Uh, no, the officer, Beeham. Yeah. Officer yeah. Beeham. He was the, the Cochise County Sheriff. Right. And in this movie, they portrayed him, in my personal opinion, very accurately. But again... Like a crook. Opinion. No, he wasn't a crook. He was just... He was there for the town, and he was siding with the Cowboys and the... The count, the he was being more like a lawman in a way. Lawman. He, si he sided more with, with the cattlemen and these cowboys. Well, the Earth sided more with uh, capitalism. They wanted right. the money, the gambling, the prostitution. They were about the money. That's really what it was. You even have John Locke in there, Terry O'Quinn. Oh, yeah, yeah he's John the U.S. Marshal who comes in and gets the boys, gets the herbs yeah. together to kind of help while Beanham's over there with the, the cowboys. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's great. Again, a collaborative effort with the actors as well as just the people that are in love with the history and they brought their own stuff, the reenactors, to make it as real as possible. So, yeah, a lot of love endured and was put together for this movie even though it did not come out successful as they wanted it to right and i will say this when i first watched it holy crap like uh billy bob thornton like when you were that. like when you guys were like that's billy bob thornton i'm like no <laughs> no it's not like it's just so His crazy scene. to see him. he does not look like billy bob thornton at all and then you're like no 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 like watch him and i'm like <gasps> leave the shotgun that is him you may go leave it Thank you. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I did not know you were still there. Oh, I did not realize you were still there. <laughs> you may go now. You may go now. But either Doc way. didn't know you was, you was in you town. You back in town. That you whole town. scene with, uh, with Billy Bob Thornton, he was told just to be a bully in the script. You know, no, no, just be a bully. And that's when he's like hitting him. Oh, you're a bit worse than my brother's kids. Like playing cards with my brother's kids or something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, either way. Tombstone. I could talk for hours about Tombstone, about this movie, the history of it. I love it. Bruce Broughton's score, which I already oh, mentioned in the, the beginning. Music. But let's uh, wrap around. Bruce Broughton's score is incredible. And Bruce Broughton has done a lot of stuff as well. Very memorable scores too. So Tombstone is just another one that lands into that you know, iconic uh, oh western themes. Iconic scene. In your Morricone, Bruce Bratton. Iconic sound, iconic scene when they're all walking down to the OK Corral uh -huh. with the fire burning and they're just walking. That's like oh. the, the picture on the cover of the... The, the video. D video DVD. The DVD cover, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. That so, black cover with the picture there. So, 
I like this. If you guys want to watch this movie, if you haven't seen it, watch it. Learn the history if you're curious. Go visit Tombstone. I'm putting a plug in for the town. It's worth going to see. Yeah. Go see the actual OK Corral where it had happened. Yeah. This and we actually went and did that and shot a vlog with Tombstone. You guys can check that out on our channel. It's available now. Uh, and yeah, we, we went to Tombstone. We didn't get to film much because Tombstone's very strict when it comes to your filming policy. Yeah. So we got what we could. It was very minimal. You can't really um, shoot in doors. It's really just kind of the, it's a touristy the streets right. and stuff. So. And we paired that with the tombstone locations too so if you want to see some of the spots that uh, are still around that we filmed interesting at fact though too i mean they did um ask to shoot in actual tombstone oh, and yeah. offer yeah. to pay uh, like to for renovating like for five for years five, four or five no years? it was like a 10-year contract they would renovate years? everything but they'd have to tear out the things all the modern stuff uh they're over the road. Right. Uh, they had and, a contract and, and they said no. Yeah. Tim yeah, Sala was like, no, because it would have yeah. it good, uh, good point. it would have um, disrupt all of the local Dude, merchants and turns. Uh, that's how they make their money. So yeah. they said no, unfortunately, which I can understand yeah. that it would have stopped and they wouldn't be getting any revenue coming in until after the movie is shot. Yeah. And that that's a big chunk of time that they filmed this movie. So it makes sense that they, they moved it to right. Mescal. But we went to Mescal, which they shoot Tombstone. We went to Old Tucson where they shot a couple of the scenes. And then, of course, um, Tombstone itself. So check out that vlog available on our channel. Mm -hmm. Either way, thank you guys for watching our reaction and very long-winded review to <laughs> Tombstone. A little bit of history in there for you. What did you guys think of Tombstone? Let us know in the comments below. You can also like and subscribe. And do the thing on our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram. So oh, what was that last <laughs> one? All the social networking t-shirts. You're there. Kicking the party, feel the party, keeps the party going on our Patreon. Gets us where we need to go, like places like Tombstone. So thank you so much, Travis. Well, and as I want to say, you guys, it's 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 done. Yeah. It's all done. So. Well. Well. Bye. Bye.